Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the new features for developing Windows applications in uh, Dataflex 19. Um, there are a couple of si significant new uh, features. Um, probably the two most notable uh, changes are uh, DPI scaling support icons. Oh, it's cutting out, isn't it? Probably there. Probably going to break it. Yeah, DPI scaling support for icon resources and the new MPI tab support that uh, Stephen mentioned this morning. So we're going to look at those two features now a little bit in detail. Start with uh, DPI scaling uh, for icons. So, so what is DPI scaling? I think it's worth just having a, a little review on that. Um, seems like every year uh, screen resolutions get higher and higher. And um, as uh, screen resolutions get higher, it means that the pixel density uh, in, your, in your screens gets smaller or tighter and tighter. And that has the effect of making your, your application, or it would have the effect of making your Windows applications look smaller and smaller. And so you need stronger and stronger glasses to be able to read. Um, Windows compensates for this by scaling up the size of your application. And so the, the final effect should be that um, the application looks the same size, but because your pixel density is higher, then it's sharper and, and crisper. Um, for anyone who's using a, a DPI scaled, uh, DPI scaling windows, you probably notice that that's not always quite true. Um, it depends on how well written the application is. Um, since Windows Vista, the operating system will perform this DPI scaling automatically or by default on, on all applications unless it's instructed not to. And you can also, of course, turn off the DPI scale or adjust the DPI scaling within Windows as well. But by default, it will do that. Um, So if, you're, if you have a, a, an older computer, it's probably a 96, 96 DPI um, pixel density, and that means you get 100% scaling in, uh, in Windows, which means it's not scaled at all. It's but if you have a higher density, a higher pixel density, like 120, you know, the, my laptop here is 120, then by default, Windows will scale. Uh, it will apply 125% DPI scaling to, to everything. Uh, unless somewhere you're configuring your application not to do that. And as you go up in pixel density, uh, the scaling goes up as well. Somewhere um, right up to 192 DPI, that's, that's very high, uh, somewhere up between 144 DPI and, and 192 is, is the so-called retina, the so retina uh, display density. I don't think in the near future it's going to get any more, um, any more dense than that. So um, how does Windows actually perform this application scaling? Um, most of it is based on the on font scaling. So Windows will uh, apply the scale factor to any system fonts that, that a Windows application is using. And I'll just talk generically now about all Windows applications, not just Dataflex Windows applications. Um, 
So it means if an application uses Windows System Fonts, and it, and it should, um, then, then the, the font in that application will scale uh, to the correct scaling factor. And uh, if the controls that, 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 that the text is being displayed in, such as you know, buttons and forms and things, if the size and location of those controls and if the size and locations of the panel and the windows are, um, if they, if your application uses font height metrics to set the sizes and locations of all of, of all the different controls and, and panels and windows, then those sizes and locations will also scale with the scaling factor. And so the, the result should be that uh, the fonts will, will grow by the scaling factor and all the controls that the fonts are used and all of your controls will just scale up by the same amount. Prior to Dataflex 17.0, uh, we did not use the uh, Windows system fonts. We had a hard-coded uh, font that looked, well, that was once a system, Windows system font uh, but as, as Windows changed, um, Dataflex didn't change its system font, and it, it never really was that noticeable up until uh, Windows changed to um, Segway UI as a system font. Then you really started to notice it. So uh, anyway, we changed that in Dataflex 17.0, and, and now Dataflex uses the correct system font um, by default. And we also fixed a few bugs related to applying the font height metrics for um, DPI scaling. But the result, the, the result of all that is that um, since Dataflex 17.0, the all of your by default all of your windows and the controls and the fonts, dis, uh, the text displayed, will all scale correctly with uh, Windows DPI scaling. But another, there's another thing in your applications that also needs to be scaled, and that is all of the various images and icons, uh, images and icons that you use in your application. Um, and so when those are scales, it would affect things like your menus, your toolbars, ribbon bars, status bars anywhere that where, where you see an image. Well, if you're displaying a bitmap, you're kind of on your own there because um, the control that the bitmap is being displayed in uh, may scale, but the bitmap itself, bitmaps are not um, naturally scalable items, so um, you would need to handle that kind of thing yourself. But Things like icons in, a, in, a, in your toolbar, you, you kind of expect those to be able to scale up and down um, with the rest of your application. So, but the thing is that icons are, um, at their heart, they're bitmapped graphic objects. So an icon's a bitmapped graphic object. They're not explicitly scalable as, as fonts are. So if, if you try to scale up a icon of a certain size, like a 16 by 16 pixel icon, if you try to scale that up to 32 by 32 pixels, you're going to get the pixelation in there. And if you try to apply some fancy manipulation to the image, um, you're going to get blurring at the very best. So different, so the, there are some, there's a special thing you need to do, uh, well, you don't need to do it, there's a special thing needs to be done to make all of that work for, for icons in your, in your toolbars. Um, Windows, the Windows API basically supports two different uh, icon sizes. Small icons, you've got small icons, and you've got large icons. Toolbars and menus in a typical application would only use small icons. 
uh, your ribbon bars would typically contain a mixture of small icons and large icons. But it's the Windows DPI scaling that determines the actual pixel size of those large and small icons. So how do, how do icons map to the various DPI scaling factors? Um, at 100% DPI scaling, which is no DPI scaling at all, uh, a small icon would be 16 by 16 pixels according to the Windows API. And a large icon would be double that, so 32 by 32. And, uh, and then as you, the scaling factor goes up, the icon size goes up. So on my machine, which is 125%, according to the Windows API, a small icon should be 20 by 20 pixels. And so on up to 200% means you double the size of the icon. There's a, there's a Windows API function that can, you can call to query that uh, icon size, which you, which you can see there. It's uh, to get system metrics. You can call that um, in your Dataflex application, and it will retrieve what, uh, dynamically retrieve what the icon size should be at the current um, DPI scaling that in, in, your, in the app. Windows environment the application is running in. The problem in Dataflex was that uh, until, until now, until 19.0, uh, icon scaling in these toolbars and menus wasn't supported correctly. Um, our toolbars and menus and, and um, context menus and Status bars are uh, based on the, the code jock control set, and it turns out that the code jock control set uh, were not handling icon scaling very well. It actually is a little bit complicated, <laughs> and um, it took them a while to work it out. And um, but the the good news is that the latest Code jock control set uh, does handle icon scaling properly in almost all cases, and that's what that's what we ship with uh, Dataflex, Dataflex 19.0. Um, there are also some changes we needed to make in our packages um, uh, to make once once we had the right code jock controls to make um, to make it all work in the Dataflex application. It turned out that uh, if you had embedded icon resources in your in your uh, application, if you're piling in icon resources, uh, Dataflex wasn't picking the correct icon size to um, to pass on to into the code jock image lists that that it uses in its um, in its toolbars and menus and so on. Um, so. Uh, if you look at order entry in uh, Flex 18.2, you'll see that it doesn't scale toolbars, menus, or status bars at all. And that, that, was, that was the behavior that Kojok um, took uh, while they weren't uh, scaling icons and things very well. They just decided, well, we won't, we won't scale them at all. And at least they'll look kind of sharp, if they're even if they're a bit too small. Um, that sounds a bit worse than it really is. If you if you look at most Windows applications, or most many Windows applications, um, really do not still do not handle um, icon scaling very well uh, it, with Windows DPI scaling. The best. The best and newest, freshest Windows applications, like your your browser applications and the very latest versions of um, uh, Microsoft Office, they do they do scale pretty well now. But but a few years older versions of those applications wouldn't be scaling properly. 
Uh, there are many dialogues within the Windows operating system itself that if, if you have DPI scaling on, they just look fuzzy. They just don't look right. Uh, and, and there are lots and lots of applications out there that aren't doing this scaling properly. And it, it's all because it's not that simple, actually. But uh, the good news is in Dataflex 19.0, uh, we, do, we, we do support that now. So let's have a quick look at, um, at how that looks. We'll start off looking at what order entry looks like in Dataflex 18.2. And I'll just run that. So there's, there's order entry. And you can see the, the icons there. They look pretty small. If you, if you pull down the menu, that the so I'm running at 125%. If you pull the menu down, you can see the text in the menu is actually scaled. The icon is still 16 by 16 pixels. It looks a little bit small. If I had 150% DPI scaling, you'd really notice now then that the, the text was a lot bigger and the icon was still this small little icon. It would start to look really uh, out of you know, the wrong size. Let's compare that to 19.0. You can see in the designer here, the icons already are modeling the DPI scaling. And if I run that application, you can see the difference. The icons are visibly bigger. The, the, the space occupied by the icons is bigger. They're bigger. Come back. So let's let's look a bit more in detail how uh, the DPI, sca uh, DPI scaling is applied uh, in the code job controls. So there's a these are the DPI these are the icon sizes that are actually applied by by the code job controls, and you'll see it's a little bit different to the size is returned by the Windows API. At 125%, if we go back to one of the earlier slides, Windows would return uh, 20 by 20 pixels as the, as the size of the small icon and 40 by 40 for a large icon. The code jock controls actually are applying a different size. It's kind of overriding what the Windows is returning. And they actually show the icons at 24 by 24 pixels, which is what, the, what it would be at 150%. At 150%, they are still applying 24 by 24. And then at 175%, it goes straight up to 32 by 32 instead of 28 by 28. So it turns out they're, they're going up in bigger steps, and there are less of those steps. And they don't document their stuff very well. So I, I've never read it anywhere in the documentation why they did that. But actually, I think it's, it's not a bug. I think it's a deliberate decision. And, and it's probably a good thing. When you're developing an application that's going to support all these different DPI scaling sizes, and you have a lot of icons, you're going to spend a lot of money developing icon building all of these icon sets of all the various sizes that you're going to need. Um, so the choice made by Kojok here means that if you have icon, if you have a single icon that's going to be able to be displayed both as, either as a small icon or a large icon somewhere in your application, and at all the different DPI scaling factors, it would mean that you need nine different sizes for every single icon. That's a lot of work. Whereas, uh, since because CodeJock have, have uh, decided to cut a few of these different um, finer sizes out, it means that now you only really need to support five sizes 
five different icons for, uh, sized icons for each image. So that already sounds like less work, but the, the sizes that they chose also make a big difference uh, as to how, long it, how much work is involved in producing those icons of those sizes. So I'd just like to try to explain that a little bit. It'll give you an insight of... See, I shouldn't have moved my foot. Is it going to come back? Yeah. Gosh, okay, I won't move. Um, hmm. That's what happened to Chip, isn't it? I definitely need... My slideshow. So uh, I want to try to give you a little bit of an insight into the kind of work you would need to be able to support icons of all these different sizes to, to make them nice and crisp. Um, if you try to imagine the very simplest icon possible might be something like a, a, a nice tidy square box. And so here we're looking at an icon file and it has all those different sizes that are required by the CodeJock toolbar, for example. Well, if you're only displaying a small icon, you would only need these three smaller sizes. And if it was only displaying large icons, you would only need these three sizes. And what it, if you're getting a graphic artist to build your icons, typically what a graphic artist would do is they'll produce a piece of artwork large at uh, 56 by 256 pixels because it's just easier to make a design that way. And then they would scale it down to the different sizes that you need. But to make that scaling look right, um, one, of the, one of the things you would need to specify is that you're scaling it all the way down to 16 by 16 pixels. Any lines that they're drawing in their large size artwork by the time it scales down to 16 by 16 pixels, it should be, no lines should be smaller than one pixel wide, otherwise the line's going to disappear. So they do that. If you're drawing a box, uh, it would, when it scales down to 16 by 16 pixels, that box would be one pixel, one pixel wide, the lines would be one pixel wide if it was, you know, like the smallest possible box. You reverse that out, it means that at 16 by 16 pixels, our box is one pixel wide. So it means that at 32 by 32, it's double the size. The, the line width is also double, so it's a two pixel wide line. And then at 64 by 64, you're doubling it again, so it would be, the lines would be four pixels wide. Our 48 by 48 pixel uh, icon is between four and two pixels wide, so the line's going to be three pixels wide. What about those intermediate size icons, the ones that Kojok kind of skipped over? There was a 40 by 40. How, how wide would those lines be in a 40 by 40 pixel box? Well, they can't be three and they can't be two, so uh, they should be two and a half pixels wide. You can't do it. So, if you're using uh, uh, software to scale those images down, it's going to make a compromise uh, when, when the line width is some fraction of a pixel. And that's when your images start to look messy. And you need to hire a graphic artist if you want your images to look good, to come and tidy them up. That's expensive. Uh, doing a lot of that, it's expensive. If you don't have to do any of it, um, it's not so expensive. So, 24 by 24 pixels here, it should be a box of 1.5 pixels wide. That's, that's one we can't get away with when you're getting down to these small sizes. So that's, that's a hand-drawn box. So those are the kind of issues that you have to face uh, when you, if you're going to all, all of these different sizes 
for large and small icons. So this is a pretty good compromise. Um, okay, just to recap, if you're converting an application to support scalable icons, um, don't use bitmaps anymore in, in, your, in your toolbars or m menus. Use icon files because icon files support various sizes and our API will now pick the right size icon for the DPI scaling that, that, you're used, that your um, application is running at. And if you're designing an application now that's going to support scalable icons, you will need at least three sizes for every icon. If it's a small icon, those three sizes will be 32 by 32, 24 by 24, and the old 16 by 16. If you don't supply all those three sizes and your application is running on a DPI scaled uh, Windows environment, then uh, what will happen is it will pick the it will pick the first icon in your set, or if you only have one size for that icon, it will pick that icon and it will kind of stretch it up. And you'll get a very fuzzy looking icon. If you ever see a Windows application running uh, that has fuzzy icons when, when your Windows is DPI scaled, now you know why. That's what's happening. Um, the good news is that um, we provide a, 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 our standard icon set that we provide. We've converted all of those icons so that they're available in, in all of the various multiple sizes. And we have two sets of those icons now. We have a new set of, of flat style icons and we still provide the old shaded I color icons as well, all with the different sizes that you would need to support DPI scaling. Oh, I should go back a slide. Um, there's, a, there's a new property in the code job, in the command bar control called P auto size, auto size, or auto resize icons. By default, it's false. And what it means is that by default, when you're running in 19.0, your toolbars will not, will act just like they did in 18.2. They won't scale, they'll just be fixed to the non-scalable si scaled size. And that's so that you have time to prepare all of the icons your apps use, uh, get all the different sizes you need, and then when you're ready, you just switch, switch that property back to true and recompile, and it, it should magically now scale your icons. Um, let's have a look look at that. Mm. Oh. The studio running somewhere. Okay, so let's uh, just quickly create a new workspace. Uh, shut the debugger down first. New workspace. Okay, so here's a new workspace and I'll create a new Windows project. Ah, oh, that's interesting. It's actually by default it uh, seems to be using the DPI scaled icons. And you can see here it's using the, the new set of flat, uh, flat icons. And uh, if I bring up the properties panel and select the command bar object, you can see PB auto resize icon is set to true. 
I think it's the wizard is actually explicitly setting that to true. If we look at the code and look inside, you can see there's a set statement for that property. So the wizard is setting it true by um, explicitly setting it true, but if you, for your older applications, it, it will be by default false. If I set it to false, you can see it goes back down to the smaller uh, fixed 16 by 16 pixel icons. True, it scales up to the correct size. This is the designer, but of course, when you're running the application, uh, when you're running the application, it will do the same thing. Uh, if you want to use the, if you don't like the the flat icons, you can use the color ones pretty easily. Um, you just copy them in. So I'll just open up. A folder to that workspace and so the bitmaps folder in this workspace is empty but if I copy in the set of bitmaps installed with Dataflex uh, under under the bitmaps directory there's a subfolder called Dataflex uh, 2016 bitmaps it's not quite true these are most of these are actually new but they're 2016 style which means they're color instead of color shaded instead of flat. Uh, easiest way is to copy all of them, even if they're not all used. Copy those into your workspace. And then now when you, you see it's using the new set of icons here. Uh, it's using at least the, the icons, the color icon set and they are also scalable right up to 200 percent. Okay, um, one more thing about scaling uh, I wanted to mention very quickly. Oh, I removed that. Let's go back to the old workspace. Um, so that's that's built in all of our code jock controls, toolbars, menus, and so on. There are other places that your application may be using uh, icons, such as uh, tree views uh, or um, buttons that display images or um, the the tab. If you have a tab dialog that's displaying images in the tabs, that they may be using icons, and and you will want those. You may want those to scale as well if you're up for the work. Um, we haven't built in support for those kind of controls to scale their icons automatically. It ca it can be done programmatically. It's not that difficult when you know how. Um, the, the thing is that all of those controls use a Windows image list. And so if you want this to work, you have to manipulate the image list so that it's loading icons of the correct size when you, when you load your application. Um, so if you're, if you're using a, an icon that has multiple sizes in your image list, then you really must explicitly choose the icon size that will be loaded, and the image lists don't do that by default. So if, at the very least, if you're not going to do any scaling of the icons, uh, then don't load an icon with multiple sizes into an image list, uh, unless, you, unless you write a little bit of extra code to explicitly load the icon of the correct size, which is the only size you have. Otherwise, the, the um, otherwise it's going to try to scale uh, the icon that it finds, and since you're not explicitly saying which one, it will pick the wrong size and scale it to the right size, and it will look it'll look fuzzy. So use either use icons with only one size in those image lists, or go the whole hog and programmatically lo uh, load 
the sized icon that you want. And how do you do that? Here's, here, is the, here is a modification you could make to the image list class to support that. Um, it calls the get system metrics function to get the icon size for a small icon. And then it loads, uh, it loads the icon of the correct size from the resource. If it doesn't find that size, once, once again, it will pick the best matching icon, best matching size icon, and scale it to the size that it needs. Remember that image lists, this is a, this is a, a restriction with image lists in Windows. One image list can only contain images of one size. So if you have 10 images in there, they, must, they will all be the same size. Uh, well, the full code for that, uh, let me see if I can load that into the studio. And we'll make this, uh, we'll make this file available on, on the, uh, on the files that go out after the, after the conference, but Here's a full, uh, full look at the, um, a modified image list that supports icon scaling for all the controls that use image lists. Um, I've created a property here called PB small icon. So the image, you just set that to true or false if you want the image list to display small icons or large icons. When the image list is created, it queries the Windows metrics to ask it what size a small icon should be, or in the case of a large icon, what size a large icon should be. And it sets PI image height and PI image width of the um, <coughs> image list to that size. And then here's the, here the code that actually loads the icon of the right size. It's it uh, once again queries the size that is needed and passes that to the code that will load the icon. Yeah, I shook the I shook my <laughs> I shook the table. It's very sensitive. And so anyway, I won't go into de too much detail uh, with with that. But that that's all of that. Package will fully support scalable icons in um, uh, for um, tree views and other controls that use image lists. Okay, uh, I'll spend a few minutes now that I have left uh, talking about uh, the new MDI tab interface support. Uh, let me. Make this a proper slideshow. Um, as Stephen mentioned this morning, um, Microsoft doesn't really like the MDI. They invented it, but they don't really like the MDI interface that much. It's, it's not well supported in Windows, even though there are a lot of Windows applications that use it, and it makes a lot of sense for certain kinds of applications. Um, they, they seem to not really like it that much. And in fact, in Windows 10, if you look at a Windows 10 application that's using any Windows 10 application, not just Dataflex, that's using MDI child windows, you'll see that the, the caption system buttons are simply not painted correctly. Um, it's, it's not a Dataflex bug. Uh, it's that's the way that Windows does it. So we could call it a Windows bug. So if you look at the MDI parent window here in this, Im in this screenshot, you see that that's painted correctly in the Windows 10 style. It's like using these flat icons to represent the co close button and, and so on. But the child windows, uh, they look kind of like Windows XP style. And once again, that, you know, it's Windows doing that. Um, 
If you look at some other applications, for example, Office 2010, uh, if you look at Excel and then open several sheets and then you know click the click the option to cascade all those windows so that they are displayed as M MDI child windows, you'll see it's, it looks exactly the same. Um, the latest version of Office doesn't support that at all. If you try to open two spreadsheets, it'll, it'll open two entire um, application windows. There are still plenty of modern applications that use uh, MDI child windows, but some of them uh, are using a combination of MDI child windows and or a combination of either alternating styles. And for example, Photoshop, the latest version of Photoshop, you can display all of the images that you're editing as floating MDI child windows, or you can display them as tabs across the top of your screen and when you click on the tab to see that image. And that's the interface that we now support in, in Dataflex 19.0. So that's an alternative interface um, and you can choose to use it or not. So let's, let's have a look at that. Um, no, that, that's the slide that summarizes what I just spoke about. Um, so it's a tab windows MDI style. And um, it uses the CodeJock uh, tab workspace API. And out, uh, the Dataflex SIG group did develop uh, a, um, a library that does use the, the CodeJock tab workspace API. They did it in a different way. Uh, we, we looked at that. I lost my slide again. We looked at that. Uh, uh, we, we didn't really like it. <laughs> so we, we built our own version that works the way that we think it should work. Um, and uh, it, this, this is a work that's still in development. Um, it's usable now. And I imagine that as, as Dataflex evolves, it will, uh, this support for this MDI tab interface will also evolve. Um, let's put my slideshow away since it's causing problems. And there's a new sample application called Order Entry Tab. And if I run that, we can see the tab interface running. Okay, so I'll make that a little bigger. Here I've got one, one view open. If I open another view, and another view, and another view. Now I have three views open, but they're open as tabs. And so the currently selected tab takes over the whole client here, like that which is kind of how the applications that use a tab MDI interface, they look kind of like that. And you've got this little drop down. It's like the studio. Um, you've got this drop down that lists all of the views you've got to open. Um, and let me open one more. Oh, I already have it open. And it supports, if you resize it, you can see that the way We've developed the way we've designed this view is it's a fixed width view, and um, it's centering it in in the middle there. But you can have it so that the views are not centered, that they're left justified like that. Now, the, on this order entry view, we've we've designed it a little bit differently. We've designed it to take up the entire available width. It's your choice. It's a design uh, um, decision. Now, we, it, the, the interface supports you this sort of drag and drop thing. So I can drag one of these tabs off to the edge here. And now I've split it into two, two tab groups. This tab group contains three views, and this one, one. Well, I want to see all of them on this side except for the order entry. So now I have three on this side and one on that side. Um, you can also drag them down to the bottom, so you can, uh, well, I think you can only have vertical and 
horizontal uh, or horizontal. So let me try it. Yeah, now I, now I can split it horizontally as well. So I have three at the top and, and one at the bottom here. So that's kind of nice. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the code involved to do that now. Um, there's not much to it, actually. So in, uh, in, your, SR, in your main um, panel object, you inside the uh, inside the command bar system object you would set this property pb tabbed workspaces to true uh, if you want tabbed workspaces and false if you don't and then inside each view you need to change the structure of objects a little bit to support the the tabbed interface properly so you can see there are, there are an extra two um, containers that wrap around all of the dif different objects inside the view. So if you're familiar with our order entry uh, si sample, you notice th these two uh, objects are new. So you need a, a scrolling container, and then you need a scrolling client area inside the scrolling container. Th this actually mirrors the, the Windows uh, window structure. Uh, that um, th that the application, act the running application, actually has these are these dataflex object mir mirror those. Now let's go back to the, the running application. Uh, if if you you can, um, oh, it's the wrong. All right, let me just close that and. If you decide you don't want to, um, suddenly you don't want to have tab work spaces uh, in that application, the only thing you need to change is that property setting. So now if I recompile and run, you'll see the same application with those same nested uh, containers. It's now back to being a you know, the floating MDI child style uh, wrong looking MDI child style uh, win Windows application. And since I'm only one minute over time, I've got just one, one or two more small things that I'd like to show you that, that, are, that are nice. Um, in this sample. Here you can see you can easily toggle the DPI scaling dynamically here. And there's, there's one little sample toolbar button in here. It uses an icon that really uh, clearly identifies what its size is. And you can see clearly here at 125% uh, DPI scaling, these images are 24 by 24 pixels because that's what this icon does. And if I turn off DPI scaling, you can see it's displaying a different icon size from the same icon file, which is now 16 by 16 pixels. So that's a good little test. If I had 150 or 175% DPI scaling, um, it would show, um, what would it show? 32 by 32. Uh, pixel image in there. Um, we've tidied up and um, we, uh, John Tui has spent a lot of time <laughs> investigating how the code jock themes work and and he's made the fruit of all of that work and his knowledge uh, now available. So this, this sample sort of demonstrates all of the different themes you can apply to your to your Windows application. So let me just tidy this up a little bit. So you can select any of these that 
that one there is probably quite useful if you if you're Irish. Um, we have we, we have one for the Dutch as well. So yeah, you can. There there are a lot more to choose from now than there were before, and. Uh, I think that's just that covers pretty much everything I wanted to show you for today. So thank you.